So today we're going to make dog food. And my first advice to you is to take this slow. Do a bit of research, watch what I do. This is a simple process. There's just a couple of pieces of equipment and if you don't have it, you can slow cook in a pot on the stove real slow like you would soup. If you don't have a food processor, not a problem, just smash it up. If you're gonna cook it low and slow, it's easy to smash up meat. Just start to do your research, get curious. We're just trying to give our dogs the happy, healthy lives that they deserve. So let's get started. Good morning, friends. Today, we are going to make some more dog food. Those of you that have seen a previous video of mine, I used some ground meat, and this time I'm going to use some not ground meat. <laughs> and we're going to make some very nutritious dog food for our dogs, but it's gonna be made out of human grade, good food, healthy for them, much better than any kind of kibble or canned food that you could purchase for them. And this will take us just a few minutes. If you wait until the end, I'll show you some takes with my dogs. They're adorable, I promise. <laughs> if you could give you know, 10 or 15 minutes every three or four days, it will make a huge difference on the health of your dogs. So I wanna go through some of the ingredients I have today. First, I'm gonna start with the main ingredients, which is meat. So I talked about in my last video, very in depth about what ingredients we need to include. This is gonna be a little bit quicker of a video, but dogs are considered either carnivore or omnivore, depending on where you read it. They have teeth that are specifically made for carnivores. So I feed my dogs a primarily carnivore diet with a little bit of vegetables in there as well. Today we're going to use a large amount of pork. These are pork loin, top loin, boneless pork chops. Make sure you get them boneless if you don't, Pork chops are a pain because the bones are so tiny. I did it once and I had to use gloves and sift through the entire batch. So it was a little bit annoying, but I didn't want to lose the batch that I had. The other meat I'm going to use today, meat, fish, is a piece of salmon. So this is a big piece of salmon. I like to do salmon probably every third batch or some sort of fish, but it's primarily salmon. I have a couple of older dogs and the fish oil is really good for them. If you aren't able to do fish, you can always use a high quality fish oil supplement. You just wanna squirt that in after you have prepared the batch for them. This is almost nine pounds of pork chops and then I've got a salmon, and then I have one lone fresh ground pork, and this is just a 1.3 pounds. So this is going to go in as well. One thing I should let mention before we get started is I have five dogs, so I cook a lot of food. You will probably want to cut this down considerably. You don't really want to have more food than you would need for three to four days. It's just like you would for human food. Anything that you are preparing, you want to make sure that you're going to use it up before it goes bad. So I would say three, four, five days max. This works for me for about three to four days. So it's usually like three and a half. And then on that half day, I'm doing what I'm doing today, which is making some more food. This literally takes me 10 minutes. There's 10 minutes to prepare it. I put it in a crock pot and then I come back when it's done and I grind it up and put it in a Tupperware, probably not Tupperware anymore. <laughs> I put it in a container and then I keep that in my refrigerator for three and a half days or so. The other thing I put in is uh, some veg. So I use a California medley. Dogs are a little bit sensitive to some vegetables. Your dogs may not be as sensitive as mine, but this has broccoli, cauliflower, and carrots. I like broccoli and cauliflower a lot. Uh, carrots are a little bit higher in sugar than I love. I also have another bag of, half a bag of broccoli, so that'll add to that. I also have some baby carrots that I had bought for my grandsons, and we didn't eat that. So we're gonna give them a little bit more carrots, but I do I did try and balance that out with the extra broccoli. I also will go into my garden sometimes and get spinach or kale that I grow in the summer for them. Just a little bit of that. I have some frozen that I'll be using for this, but I didn't bring it up. So I'll go down to the basement in our extra refrigerator where we keep the dog food. The other thing that I will use, and not in every batch, but in a lot of batches, is eggs. Eggs are a good source of protein for them. It's also a good source of fat for them. I do not put the shells directly into the batch. 
So some of you may ask about that. I got a lot of questions about eggs and eggshells. If you're going to use the eggshells, you need to thoroughly clean them because the eggshells can carry some bacteria and things like that for humans and dogs. You need to sterilize the shells. Then I grind them with a coffee bean grinder. Then you can pour it in. I use a supplement, a mineral supplement, and it all already has the calcium, so I don't always do that process. I sometimes will cut out things that take super long. For me, cleaning the eggs properly and then grinding them and then putting them in, it's just a step that sometimes I don't feel like doing. I've done it, it's fine. I've usually done it when I've run out of my mineral supplement and wanna make sure that they're getting enough calcium, but that is what I'll do. And I will show you the supplements when we do step two. The other thing I use is a little bit of broth. If your dogs are not sensitive to chicken, you can use a chicken broth, you can use a vegetable broth. I often use a bone broth. I'm just out of it right now. So this is an organic beef broth. It's very low in sodium. So you just wanna make sure that you don't use any regular broth. It either has to be salt-free or very low sodium. So just look at the back of the container. And we're just gonna use a little bit of this. I use like a cup of this and then I'll use water for the rest of it. Moving along, I also will use blueberries. So I've got two containers of blueberries. I also use frozen blueberries if I don't have fresh but I just happen to have fresh blueberries. The blueberries are really good for their weepy eyes. If you have any dogs with weepy eyes, I have three Cavalier King Tar Spaniels and they have weepy eyes inherently. And so the blueberries do help them. So does using good water in their bowls. So if you can use water from your refrigerator that has a filter or use a Brita or one of those type of of things that's really good or if you prefer to buy bottled water any of those are better than the tap water for their weepy eyes and then also probably again every third or fourth batch i'll sometimes put in sardines if you get the kinds with bones in them that will also give them a little bit more calcium and sardines are just really good for them these have skin and bones so that's really good for your dogs I prefer to eat them skinless and boneless, but that's just my preference. The dogs don't seem to mind. Pumpkin. I put the pumpkin, so I should say what I put in in the second phase. So the second phase, I'm putting in pumpkin, I'm putting in blueberries, I'm putting in the sardines at the end. The sardines don't need to be cooked. Okay, one other thing about the meat. I usually stick mine in the refrigerator when I make one batch, I'll pull the stuff out of the freezer and put it in the refrigerator so that it gets a little less frozen. But if it is frozen, this is fairly frozen. We just got back from vacation. So this is fairly frozen because I just threw this in a day and a half ago. It's not a problem. If we're gonna cook it low and slow in our crock pot and it'll be fine. I'll add an hour or two onto the crock pot and this will cook just fine. And it'll, you'll know it's totally cooked through. It'll be falling apart. It'll be perfect. This is also a little bit frozen, so not a problem again. This is a really convenient way to feed your dogs and it's extremely healthy. So frozen, unfrozen, whatever you've got, let's use that. The only thing I would say is don't use leftovers for humans. A lot of times that has sodium in them. Dogs are extremely sensitive to sodium. You don't wanna cause your dogs any problem by giving them a lot of sodium. So make sure you're using fresh stuff that's not been seasoned. I also have a dog that's very sensitive to garlic. They say small amounts of garlic can be good for things like ticks and fleas. I tried it. I have a dog that's sensitive to garlic, so I no longer feed garlic. I do sometimes put ginger in. I'm just out of it right now, so I use fresh ginger, and that's really good for their health. So let's get putting this together. So I'm going to grab my crock pot. So I have a fairly large crock pot because again, I have five dogs and I will put how much to feed your dogs per day in the description box below. So no need to be concerned about that. I have a silicone liner in my crock pot. So this is the silicone liner. It comes out, I'm able to clean it real easy and I love this thing. So I will link the crock pot. I will link the liner just in case anybody's looking for something this large. What I typically do is I will put the vegetables at the bottom. It just helps for the meat to be kind of stuck to the bottom, which just is harder for cleaning. So that's just a personal preference. So I'm gonna just start assembling. I do buy a lot of my vegetables frozen. It's just convenient. I sometimes get big, large bags from Costco Sam's Club if you're in the United States. 
And then these just go in the bottom like that. Again, because I have some extra broccoli from a recipe I did, I'm just gonna put in some more broccoli. And I put about 80% meat, 20% veg. The veg, I don't know that it's all that critical, but I think it's good for their poop and things along those lines. So I do include it. Again, last time I had someone that was very unhappy with me for saying that dogs are carnivores. They do have carnivore teeth, but they can eat vegetables in the wild. If they can't find animals, that's what they tend to go with. So we'll give them a little bit of veg. I'm not gonna use all these carrots. I am also carnivore, so my husband and I eat primarily a carnivore diet, sometimes ketivore. I don't eat a lot of things like carrots, but we'll, we'll give them to the dogs because they do like them. I will put the salmon in next just because if the salmon doesn't stay under the water, it just kind of gets hard, probably similar to what happens if we do it ourselves for human food. So I've already used one filet for a previous batch. And so it just looks like this, it's like a salmon. And then you just wanna be careful when you're cutting something open with scissors. I always put these scissors in the dishwasher when I'm done with any raw meat, no different than cooking human food. So this was a little bit frozen as well, not a problem. I did put these all in the freezer like a day and a half ago. Then I'll cut open the pork, ground pork. I typically will use ground meat if I can find it. If the ground pork looks super expensive to me for some reason, I will buy it like, like I did the pork chops. So the ground pork was $3.69 a pound. The pork chops are $2.99 a pound. I know that our animals are our loves, right? But we also need to look at cost. And as you guys know, I'm semi-retired. This is my job. <laughs> YouTube is my job right now. And so for me, I need to look at price as well. So some of you may ask about organic. I use organic if the price looks reasonable compared to the non-organic, but I don't make everything organic. I don't eat everything organic. I think that this food is so much healthier than anything else I could be doing for my dogs from like a commercial kibble or canned option that I don't feel like I need to be feeding my dogs organic all the time. It is a personal preference. If you can afford to buy all organic, then absolutely do it. I'm sure that that's better. I shouldn't say I'm sure, but <laughs> they say it's better. I just don't always trust even the labels anymore. So anyway, we've got the fish, we've got the ground pork, and then I'm going to put this pork on top, pork chops on top. And don't worry, I'm going to thoroughly wash my hands because I am touching lots of meats here, fish and pork. And we got all the pieces off of it. The only thing that's hard about having it frozen is getting it in the crock pot, especially because I have lots of different things in here. So I'm just gonna move some things around. These are some really thick pork chops. So again, it's not 100% frozen. We just need to be able to get the top on it. So if I can move this around a little bit, also will help it cook a little bit better. All right, now time to wash hands. Okay, so we've used all this. Again, these are gonna go in at the end. Then I do wanna put some eggs in. I put the eggs in, I usually use like five or six eggs. So maybe you might only wanna use three eggs if you've got less number of dogs. I use, try and use like one per dog. And I just feel like that's super healthy for them. Now my dogs are sensitive to chicken, but they can have eggs. That might not be the case for your dogs. So just try it once and introduce it slowly if you haven't used eggs in the past, because if your dogs are sensitive to chicken, which a lot of dogs are, then they may be sensitive to eggs. I asked about it once when I was at a pet health conference and they said that some dogs are just not sensitive to the eggs. So, cause I thought, Am I inadvertently hurting them because they're only getting a little bit? And they said no. So, all right, that was two. We will get more in here. You'll see me later. I grind all this up in a food processor. And the reason why I do that is I've got several dogs with almost no teeth. All of my dogs are rescues. They came to me with different health concerns. We prefer to try and rescue dogs that have health concerns because I am a person that likes to restore health to pets. We have a do deaf dog, we've got 
few dogs with mitral valve disease, so we try and take the ones that maybe other people wouldn't have the means or the opportunity to care for, so. So that is why I grind their food, and I apologize for this being in the way. It's just a little light for us. Okay, so I've got some, let's see, I did five eggs. So I've got my five eggs in there, and then I'm going to use this. I am not going to measure it. I just kind of pour a little bit in. It's about a cup. If you have less food, you might want not want to, especially if it's only low sodium. If it was no sodium, I would probably use this exclusively, but because it's got a little bit of sodium in it, I'm going to use the rest as water. And then I'm just gonna pour some water in here as well. So it depends on what your dog prefers. My dogs don't care whether it's super wet food or if it's chunkier food, they will eat anything. Literally, it's a free for all here when I feed. These dogs just love the food that I make them. Because I've got these dogs that have come to me with health issues, two of them have almost no teeth. The third Cavalier, they're all laying around here. The third Cavalier has some teeth, but she had 22 removed before we rescued her. So she, it's a issue with Cavaliers. That's why I grind everything up. I use a little bit more water than maybe some of the rest of you may want, but also dogs really need the moisture in their diet. I don't mind putting a little bit extra water in there when I start to grind the food in the food processor. If I find that it doesn't have enough water, I'll just add some water into it. I think this should be fine for getting it cooked up. We're gonna start the crock pot and I'm gonna put the top on it over here. Hopefully this last pork chop fits. It looks like they all fit. So we are going to start this. I'm gonna cook this on low. I cook it on low for eight hours normally. You could even do six hours if you have a smaller amount, but I have a large amount in here. I normally would do eight hours, but also because we have somewhat frozen food in here, I'm probably gonna cook it the full 10 hours just because all of this meat and it's full to the top needs to all cook down as well. So I'm gonna do 10 hours. I will give you a tip. What works better for me is I will do this at night, but the lighting may have been a little bit dark if I had showed you this at night, but I will put all this into a crock pot at night and then I will go to bed and in the morning, the eight hours will have gone by, plus this automatically goes on warm. When the low eight hours is done, it'll go on to warm and then it'll stay on warm for I believe five hours. I don't sleep that long. I'm about a seven to eight hour a night sleeper. I come out here and it's still warm. I take the top off for a while, let it cool down just a little bit so that I can handle it without burning myself. And I'll put it into the food processor in the morning. But again, I'll need to then have something to feed the dogs. So usually I have just one part of the batch left. And so then I will cook this I'm going to let this cook for the 10 hours that I'm going to cook this for, and then we'll come back and I will show you how I process it uh, to get this ready to eat. So I'll see you soon. Had enough of watching me just wait and I'll show you some videos with my dogs. They're the best and they make much better stars of the show than I do. Stay tuned for that. Okay, so we are back and it has been about 10 hours for me. So I always let my crock pot cool a little bit because it's safer for me and it's easier to handle the food. I also put on something to protect my clothes. This is my gentastic journey. Call it a smock, an apron. <laughs> whatever you like to call it. I tend to be a little messy. So my dogs usually start to mill around about this time because they know I'm kind of messy and they know that inevitably I will drop something or the blender will get out of control and things will start flying around. So <laughs> I never said I was perfect at any of this. I just wanted to pique your interest about making your own dog food. I decided that because I've done a video about this before and I go into why I do gentle cooked versus raw. I do why you do more meat than veg. I go into a lot more of the ingredients. I thought I would do a tips this time because I don't wanna keep it the same for both videos. If you watch that first video, I have lots and lots of views on it. It is one of my most popular videos and that makes me happy. I am not trying to tell you exactly what to cook in this video. I am trying to pique your interest. So you do your own research and figure out what your dogs need. There are different types of recipes that are good for dogs with different ailments. If you have dogs that are like, I have do uh, two of my dogs have mitral valve disease, very 
common in Cavaliers. So this food helps them, but I also cook foods that are good for their heart. That's uh, a lot of the beef and beef hearts and things like that. Again, start doing your research. You can cook what I'm cooking for them, but you probably want to get into a little bit more information so that you can make sure they're getting everything that they need. So a couple of tips. First of all, vary your meats. I usually add more than one meat to each batch. And by more than one meat, I will do, like in this batch, we have pork chops and we have salmon. In other recipes, I will put in a bunch of ground turkey and then I'll put in 20% of it being ground lamb or ground bison or just another meat. That just gives them the variety that they need, the different amount of fats that they might need. I also supplement with a good fish oil for my dogs as well, because I've got two older dogs and so it's good for their hips and joints. I think another important tip is to put 80% meat and 20% veg, 80 to 90% meat. And I have cooked 100% meat before. If I don't have proper veg in the house, veg, I mean vegetables. <laughs> so that's another tip. They are predominantly carnivores. As I mentioned, you'll, you can do some research and determine that some people consider them to be omnivores because they can eat vegetables, but that's primarily due to the domestication of these animals. In the wild, they were truly carnivores, but would eat veg only if they couldn't find any meat to eat. Another tip would be to cook overnight, and that's primarily how I do it. So before I go to bed, I throw all the meat into the crock pot, and then I put it on eight hours on low temperature. So say I put it in and it's not like the minute before I go to bed, but you know, after dishes are done, dinner's done, all that kind of stuff, I'll put it in a crock pot. I'm not a long, long sleeper. I'm a seven, eight hour sleeper. It'll go on to low if I, for some reason, it's been longer than eight hours automatically and that's fine that starts that cool down process. I mean, it's still very, very warm when it's on warm. And then sometimes because my husband leaves earlier than I do, he will unplug it for me so that it starts to cool down so that I can take my shower in the morning and then it's it's ready to go. And I always have food already available for my dogs. So they are not like, hey lady, <laughs> can you get up to make the food? So I always have like one more meal available for them of the prior batch. Another tip, organ meats. Add those organ meats to your dog's diet. Be careful uh, if your dogs are sensitive to chicken, like don't feed them chicken livers or chicken gizzards or chicken feet. Be careful with those kinds of things. There's a lot of chicken organ meat out there, especially at the grocery store. My little dogs are sensitive to chicken, especially Molly. I have to be careful that I get beef liver, beef hearts. I also will get turkey sometimes if that's available usually right around the Thanksgiving holiday, you'll see more of that coming out. And so I'll try and stock up on some of that. Organ meats are very good for them. It gives them a lot of different vitamins and minerals than you're getting with all the rest of the meat. Same for humans. A lot of the stuff is similar for what you would do for your own body, except for the standard American diet. <laughs> they don't need any of that. Next tip, work with your veterinarian on the supplements. I probably got the most questions on the supplements that I feed my dogs. And that's very specific to your dogs and the needs of your dogs. Again, I've got older dogs, our chocolate lab, she's got some joint pain and things like that. I do recommend, and most of the things that you'll read out there will recommend a good mineral supplement. I also have a vitamin supplement as well. And that's just because if I'm missing something, I don't want my dogs to be missing out. I take a multivitamin, I'm a carnivore, and I take a multivitamin and that just covers me. I know there's people out there that'll say you don't need it, but it's one of those things that if I don't need it, mm, I'll pee it out then and that's okay. Similar for the dogs, I don't ever put more than the recommended amount. I may put a little bit less than the recommended amount, and it does get a little bit diluted because I put some of my supplements directly into the batch, and I put some of my supplements in at the feeding time, so per dog, because some of my supplements are specific to certain dogs. There's also some supplements that say don't get these warm, and because this mixture is warm when I start to work with it, that's important. Also, plan ahead. Don't be caught without any food because that's stressful. You can't just run to the store and buy a bag of food. You've got this eight, 10 hour process of waiting for the food to be done. Have I been caught without before? Sure. And then what will happen is my husband will be like, oh, I didn't tell you that we were down to the last because he and I switch off. I feed in the morning, he feeds in the evening. So I'll throw a, a pound of meat on the stove 
cook it up and feed them that. It's it's not the end of the world. I try and make it so we've got, I've got one or two feedings of food available left is when I put my crock pot stuff together. So plan ahead. Also, if you're traveling, so we're big RVers. When I know that there's a trip coming up or if I'm going out of town, my husband really doesn't do this process. <laughs> he probably would if if he needed to, but he doesn't. I'm the one who does this. I will plan in advance, and so I will cook multiple batches in advance. The tip to freezing this food is put it in the refrigerator first, get it nice and cooled down, and then put it in the freezer. If you put it in the freezer when it's, you know, warm or room temperature, then it causes it to separate. And so then you have this kind of lumpy, watery mixture that's not easy to, to divvy out. And it's just, it isn't the consistency that you're used to. So that is a tip. And I only found that out on accident. We had some food that was extra and it was just a little bit. And I didn't want to confuse the person that was watching our dogs. So I froze that little bit and took out a new batch. And the one that I froze that had been previously in the refrigerator had the same consistency that I was used to, where the other ones I froze, I just thought whenever you freeze them, you're always gonna have this bad consistency. So I learned that inadvertently, and nobody ever told me that, but refrigerate it first, get it nice and cold, and then freeze it. We went on a three-week cruise, and I made enough food for us to be gone for three weeks. It takes up a lot of room in the freezer. <laughs> when you have five dogs, but it, it works. My last tip for this is this can be cost effective. Some of the really good foods out there today that are commercial foods that are almost human grade, something similar to what we're doing here, it can be extremely expensive. Somebody was telling me for their two dogs, $300 a month. That's a lot of money. <laughs> I think that you can do a great job for your dogs and still make it cost effective. This may not be as cheap as buying kibble. You know, I think of kibble like the standard American diet on the far bad end. It's like Burger King, McDonald's, Wendy's every night for dinner for your dogs. Nothing that's going to sustain them. Nothing that's going to give them a long, happy, healthy life. Buy the meats when they're on sale. Buy them in bulk. Go to a place where you can buy a large amount of meats. Go to your butcher and see what they have. They're, your local butchers are great for some of those organ meats. And just do the same you would do for your family. Just buy things when they're on sale. That will make both your dogs and you happy because you feel like you're doing a good job with that. All right, so next, let me show you the rest of this process. So here's my crock pot. I will link this in the description box below. It is fantastic because it's gigantic. And if you have multiple dogs, this might be helpful for you. I didn't realize how many people have as many dogs as I do, but the comments that came back from you guys, there's a lot of you with a lot of dogs. Big crock pot is super helpful. And this one has lasted me a really long time. I have had some crock pots that have, and I think I'm calling, these are slow cookers. I'm not, I'm using the brand name, but slow cookers that have not lasted me very long. This one has lasted me a long time. I have been known to put a crock pot in the oven. We used to have a cat that could open up crock pots. And so I used to stick it in the oven when the for the holidays, like we'd be going to church and I'd stick it in the oven, come back and then turn on the oven to preheat it. And then I, I lost a lot of crock pots that way. Anybody with me there? Probably not. It's a crazy thing and I did it more than once. So that's even crazier. So my food is a little bit cooled down, but it's still warm. The crock pot's still a little bit warm to the touch, but it is going to be fine for what we're trying to do. I'm going to show you my second piece of equipment. Those of you that saw my first video, these are the same pieces of equipment It's what I use every three or four days. This is a, and you can't see it anymore, but this is a Magicos brand food processor. I did a lot of research to find out what was really good for meat grinding because I've got uh, three dogs with very few teeth. Molly only has four, so I need this to be fairly broken down. I will link it below, but it's called M-A-G-I-C-C-O-S. Magicos, Magicos. Anyway, it has some really nice suction cup feet. And so that's the only thing is it gets stuck wherever I put it. We're gonna put it here and plug it in. And this is where I'll bring in some of my other ingredients that we didn't put in the batch originally. The putting it into the crock pot part is a five minute process. The longest part is for me to go to the basement to the dog's freezer and get their food out of it and bring it back upstairs. And then you literally throw it all in the crock pot. So that's a five minute, 10 minute process. And then the second process, I break this down into two parts because that's what will fit in here. This is a fairly normal size food processor. I break the amount in half and put it in here so that I don't go over the fill line because that's when things go very wrong. And that's when the dogs start coming around because they know that the food is gonna be flying all over the place. Didn't In my last video, I didn't introduce all my dogs, but you guys have met these dogs before. 
This is Bree Bree. She's sitting on her little rug that she likes to watch me when I'm in the kitchen. This is Molly. She's always a camera hog. She comes over as soon as I start to point to other dogs. She's really not a camera hog. She's just jealous of everybody else. So this is Jax. Jax is our black lab. And then Hazel, you want to come over here? Cuckoo girl. This is Hazel. She's our chocolate lab. She's the oldest girl in the room. Uh, well, I think I'm the oldest. Well, so then do we see everybody? So we got all five of them here. So back to our process. All right, so grab a utensil. This is a big black scooper. It needs to be heavy duty because you're going to be putting it into the food processor. And again, this pork will kind of fall apart because it's been cooking low and slow for a long time. And I kind of just divide this in half to make it easier on myself. I do it while it's in here. If you remember, we put some nice eggs in here. We put some salmon in here. So I'll make sure that I get some of all of that in each half of this process. And the dogs are all milling around. I do have the salmon in here. So the salmon is towards the bottom. If you remember, I put that in right after I put in the veg. I put the veg at the bottom just because it prevents the meat from sticking to the bottom. This makes it a little easier for cleanup. No other reason than that. And then these pork chops are falling apart, so they're perfect. These had a little bit of fat on them, not a ton. I've not had a problem with having any of my dogs with too much fat. In fact, once I started doing this type of cooking, it is so much easier to keep my dog's weight where it needs to be. All my dogs are in a good range for their... Hello, everybody. Everybody's over here trying to say, hey, mama, we're hungry. So they know that I usually give them a little taste. You gotta give a taste, right? Yeah, they're all, all good weights. I attribute that to this food as well. It's so easy to measure this food out versus kibble, which kibble is just so concentrated that you do overfeed kibble to begin with. I guess canned food, you can measure it out based on the can size, but I just find that this is the one food where I feel like my dogs don't go up and down and wait. I measure it exactly. My husband measures it exactly. My kids that watch the dogs measure it exactly. Now I'm just going to take some of the juices and make sure that there's plenty of juice in here. There's a nice broth from the little bit of bone broth that we used. You don't have to use bone broth and you wanna try and find a bone broth that has not a lot of spices in it. A lot of people make their own bone broth and I will do that if I've got a bunch of bones, I can make some bone broth, but I do typically buy it. I will buy it from reputable brands. This brand I have right now is just in a pinch. You can see my prior video, I use it in an organic bone broth that is no sodium or low sodium, very low sodium. You really gotta check it. Sometimes that term low sodium is relative to what the normal is. And so you just wanna make sure that you're looking at that. So I read all my labels. You don't want a lot of garlic and onion in your, see I'm already missing, so <laughs> the dogs are getting a little bit of a taste. But you don't want a lot of spices in here, especially if there's something your dogs are a little sensitive to. Molly, the Blenheim Brown and White Cavalier, she is sensitive to garlic. It makes her lips swell up, which is a very bad sign. I just put such a small amount of the, what I typically do is bone broth in there that I don't think it hurts anybody and it's got very little sodium. I would say that's the one thing you want to make sure you're not doing. Like a lot of times if we hand feed our dogs from the table, just make sure it's not something that you've already previously salted that really can give them a hard time. A lot of dogs can get pancreatitis from things like that. Hopefully when I do the audio, it will not make this sound too loud. I can cut out some of the background noise, but I literally just start the food processor. And I do that just to kind of combine everything and make sure it looks moist enough. It does, it looks like dog food kind of. <laughs> so, or like a chunky tuna salad. All right, so I've got some sardines that I'm gonna put in here. These are not the staples. These sardines have the skin and the bones and so that's good for some additional calcium. You do wanna try and get your sardines to be salt free. I also rinse them just to be double sure. This is why I wear an apron, because I just splattered all that juice all over me. So sardines, you just have the dogs all over me all day. <laughs> all right, 
So that's a can in that one. As I mentioned before, I will use frozen blueberries, or in this case, I have some blueberries from our recent trip. These are nice organic ones. Again, great for their weepy eyes. Yeah, and I took all the yucky ones out earlier, so there's no yucky ones in here. Pumpkin. So 100% pure pumpkin. Don't use like a pumpkin pie. Pumpkin is good for dogs for a lot of reasons. It makes their poops real nice. I've cut myself a couple times, so I'm a little bit nervous about this can opener. And I keep telling myself I got to get one of the ones that cuts open the can without it having sharp edges, but I just haven't gotten around to it. Okay, so this is a very full, very full, full food processor. And this is where I run into problems when it starts to come over, but we'll see what happens here. I added this sardines, the half of the can of pumpkin and half a thing of blueberries. So it needs a little bit more juice. So I'm going to just take a measuring cup and I'm just going to pour some in here. And that will help it incorporate a little bit better. Made it very, very full. If you watch my other video, I think I did the same thing there. I think it, it's, it's me. All right. I can tell that I'm almost ready when the color starts to turn a little bit gray. And that's the blueberries getting all incorporated. I need to get a little bit orange from the pumpkin. So this is the consistency. It's kind of a nice, very thick oatmeal consistency. And this goes into my container. This is my dog food container. And this will typically fit an entire batch. And again, I've been doing this for about 10 years, so I know exactly what's going to fit and what's not. Have I made too much? Sure. But usually if it fits in the crock pot, it will fit in this container. Worst comes to worst, I can put it a, a little bit in a smaller container and just feed that as their first meal. It's not taking up a ton of room in your fridge. This is all, all already the largest thing in our fridge. So, but we've got a lot of dogs. So, so this is as simple as it is. You grind it up, you put it into here, and then you do the second step. And that'll give me a full container for my beautiful dogs. I would strongly suggest you watch my first video. I go through a lot more. It's a much longer video. Got a lot more information about the ingredients and the different types of ingredients, but hopefully my tips today have helped you. I do have some supplements that I show in the other video as well. So if you're looking for supplementation for your dogs, there's some information about that. But let me at least show you the two that I strongly recommend. I do use a kelp supplement. I've got some supplements because of the mitral valve disease as well. This RX Vitamins K9 Minerals is really good. It's recommended by Dr. Judy Morgan, who's a holistic vet that I follow. I wish I lived closer to her because I would take all my dogs to her, although she's just recently retired, but she does a lot on YouTube, so follow that. This is a powder. You can put, put it directly into the batches or you can put it in directly into each dog's bowl. I don't have any problem putting this directly into the batch. These don't have any problem being warmed. There are a couple of supplements that I feed that specifically say do not heat. So I make sure that I don't heat those. And so those I divvy out as I'm feeding the dogs. This K9 Minerals is good by RX Vitamins for Pets. And then also they have a multivitamin supplement as well. Which is right here. As I mentioned in previous videos, I'm a big labeler, so I label on the top. I keep the top facing me so that I know exactly what needs to be put in each half of the batch. The other thing that I have been doing for many years now, not since the beginning, but I went to a couple of pet wellness seminars. Again, I follow that Dr. Judy Morgan. So if she's in town or somewhere where I can drive, I'll go see her. And they usually have really good people that are there as well. And a mushroom supplement is great. I use Sacred 7 mushroom extract powder. And then I put this into every batch as well. As I said, I do a kelp supplement. Work with your vet so that you know what 
your dogs need. I've got a couple supplements that I feed for their hearts. I use a, something called Pet Protect by Five Leaf Botanicals. It's a supplement that is dropper based. And so I put this directly into each feeding. So there's a lot of things that I put into feedings. The joint supplements for Hazel and Jax, I put directly into their food when I'm preparing it for that meal. And that's a kind of a better way to do it. So if you have one or two dogs, I would put all the supplements in at feeding time. That way you know the exact amount that they're getting. When I put the supplements, like the vitamin and mineral supplements, it's getting incorporated here. And I do mix this a lot more once the food is in here. While it's getting very well incorporated in, it's a, a little bit less exact than if you were to put it directly into the bowl of food at feeding time. So, you know, you might get a little dilution where the dogs may maybe not getting as much as you would have liked them to get. But again, I do that only with my minerals and my vitamins and minerals and some things like kelp, like if they get a little less kelp, not a problem. I don't put a ton in to begin with. Like if it has a suggestion, I put, I err a little bit on the side of caution and don't put a full amount in there. Because again, this is supplementation. This is something that is good for them. But if they're getting it all the time, then I don't think it needs to be huge, large amounts of supplementation. So I hope you found this helpful. I'm gonna give a little bit to my dog so you can see their reaction. And then we'll finish up this process off camera. But let me grab their bowls. And you can see what kind of bowls I use. Okay. Three of them here. The biggest dog, Jax, the Black Lab, gets this bowl. They, they all love this food a lot. So they all have slow feeders except for one dog, and she's our most recent dog. She came from a puppy mill, so I'm not sure why she's not as an aggressive eater as the other. Aggressive's probably not the right term, but all my dogs eat within like 15 seconds. So she's the only one that gets the non-slow feeder bowl. These are like a nice resin. You do need to wash these consistently. So I wash the bowls every day just because even though this is gently cooked, I just don't think it's good for bacteria and things like that to get in the bowl. I feel like the Pied Piper. Do you see all my, <laughs> all my wagon tails behind me? So these are the other two bowls. Hazel also has a slow feeder and this is Charlie's bowl. So we'll put a little bit in each dog bowl and let them have a taste. For those of you that didn't see my other video, I use an ice cream scooper. And this is how I measure out what they're going to eat. So the little dogs just get two level scoops each. And so this will just go into their slow feeder bowl. And then I just move it into the different compartments. Now this is not a full feeding because I haven't put the supplements in yet. So I'll do a, just a half feeding to show you what I do with the dogs, but we'll just put one level scoop. So I'll know that I only have to give them one more scoop. The big dogs obviously get more than that but we're just gonna give them a little taste too. A little bit for Hazel, a little bit for Jax. All of the dogs have a different place in the house to eat. And that's just because we've gotten them at all at different times. They've all been rescues. You never know about their food aggressions. To me, it was always safer to kind of separate. And then wherever we separated them to became kind of their place to eat. And so we've never had any food aggression problems. That's what we do. I have a video that I put out that goes through a lot more detail about how to do this process. So I'll link that above and in the description box below. All right, so my Cavaliers all wear hats because they have long ears and we don't want them to get in their ears. Then we put their hats on. And they know that they're getting something, even though they're like, wait a minute, this isn't our normal feeding time. All right, so we'll feed the girls first. The girls get fed over here. They all know the word of this young man. I'm going to put that on. Sit. Ruby. Sit. Rock. Okay, Jack, he gets fed right here. Sit. Good boy. All right, and then the last two are Hazel and Charlie. All right, now that the dogs all have some food for their bellies, because they've been watching me make this food, I am gonna finish preparing it, and then this will go into the refrigerator. And again, it's 
serve them for about three days because I just gave them a little bit of extra. I'll feed them the rest of their food in a little bit when I'm done preparing this. This is Charlie's favorite spot on top of the chair. I think he thinks he's a cat. This is Bree Bree's favorite spot. It's right behind the chair, but within watching distance of the kitchen. Molly's napping over here on the couch. Hi, Miles. She's our deaf dog, so she used to watch what everybody else is doing to know what's going on. And we have our friend Jax, who is relaxing after a rough morning of watching the yard. And then there's little Miss Hazel. Hi, Hazy. Good girl. Good girl. Aren't my dogs so cute? If you want to learn more about them, I will post a link above on meeting the dog rescues. So hope you guys have a great day. Add any comments below. I will answer any questions that you have that I have the answers to, at least try and point you in the right direction. Otherwise, thanks for joining me. I enjoy helping you and me keep our pets happy and healthy. Thanks. Want to learn more about keeping our dogs happy and healthy? I have a whole video series. So at the end of this video, you'll be able to see my playlist on dog health. Check it out.